Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Now, I first want to see if everyone can see and hear me clearly. If you can, please comment. If you can hear me and you can see me clearly, please type yes. If you can see me and if you can hear me, please type yes. Praise the Lord. If you can see me and if you can hear me, please type yes. Okay, so nobody's responding. That's fine. Okay, we're going to get started. So, my name's David Jones. Praise the Lord, everybody. Wonderful. Okay, I got a yes. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to get started. I want to share with you uh, tonight uh, briefly uh, some thoughts that I have concerning uh, this nation. And I want to uh, share with you what I believe uh, God is saying. Okay. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So um, if you've ever heard me minister, if you've ever heard me preach or teach, um, I do my best to tell people the truth. Uh, the reason being is that uh, I don't believe a pastor or anyone who is in uh, religious or leadership authority uh, to lie to the people of God uh, because we are held at a more uh, accountable uh, to God more, more so than someone who is not handling the word of God. So I'm going to tell you truth tonight concerning the things that have taken place within the last few months or so and the future of this nation as it is today and what we're currently experiencing. Now, the scriptures clearly define um, that in the last days, these things will happen. There will be wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, uh, earthquakes in various places. Christ himself said that to his disciples. So as we are living in this present hour, we can all agree that we are in what the Bible calls the beginning of sorrows. Okay. So we're in the beginning of sorrows as we speak today because we can all agree that there have been wars and there are continually to be wars. There's pestilences, there's earthquakes, and there's famines in this nation and in all other nations that we speak. Now, there's something that's being taken place. There's something that's happening that very few people know about. And it goes back to the early Bible days to the promised children here in the earth. God made a promise to a specific group of people known as the Hebrews, or the so-called Jews. And he promised these group of people that they would have land. He made a covenant with them. Now, within this promise, there's a group of people that are cursed. And this is what a lot of uh, pastors are not talking about today. There's a people here that are blessed and then there's also a people here who are cursed. So it is imperative for us to know who are these people? Where do they come from? We have to identify these two classes, these two nations of people 
Therefore, we can have a clearer uh, perspective on the reality that's taking place now and where we're headed to. You see, if we don't know this, then we are going to be uh, in darkness and, and suffer spiritual ignorance in these last days and not discern the times that we're living in because these times are crucial. These times are perilous. So, the scripture talks about a man named Abram, further known as Abraham, but his name was Abram. Okay, and he had a son named Isaac, and then that son had a son named Jacob. So the story, and we've all have uh, read this story, if you've been in church for an amount of time, uh, the story of about Isaac. Okay. Isaac, and you have Rebekah, his, his wife. Okay. The story goes as follows, that Isaac, he pleaded with the Lord okay, for his wife because she was barren, and the Bible says that God granted his plea. Now, at that time, women who were barren were considered cursed by God. They, they were unfruitful and they were not able to bear children to continue the family lineage or the family heritage. So they would consult the Lord and they would go to God for God to uh, open the womb so that they were able to conceive seed. Now notice this. Just notice what I just said, seed. I want you to keep that in your mind. Seed. Okay, because I'm going to talk about seed tonight. Now, um, Rebecca, uh, the scripture says that she would inquire of the Lord. Now, at that time, there were uh, prophets. Now, the Bible doesn't go into detail as to if she went to a prophet, but there are times when people who went to inquire of God, they went to a prophet, and prophets were known to sit outside uh, under what they call the terambith tree, and this tree would shade them from the sun. And someone who went to inquire from God, they would go and sit at the foot of the prophet until the prophet heard from God, and then the prophet would speak, thus saith the Lord. So the prophet, we can see here, spoke to Rebekah. Okay. So she says, she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, um, two nations. I want you to take note of that. Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples shall be separated from you. Okay, two nations, two peoples. Now, it goes forward and says, one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Well, that goes against what the custom was back in the uh, ancient Bible times, because the custom was that the firstborn, the one who came out the womb first, had specific rights and privileges. It was called the birthright. And that birthright gave that child a double portion of the family inheritance. So when that child was born, the birthright was given to that child. They would receive a double portion of the inheritance at a set time, at a, an appointed time, when that child reached masculinity or an age of accountability, the father would pass down a double portion of the inheritance. Okay, so she went and she inquired of the Lord. God spoke to her and said, the two nations, two peoples are in your womb. Okay, now, prior to this, there was a struggle in her womb. These two infants were uh, causing uh, some type of 
uh, pain. And, and she went to inquire. That was the whole purpose for her to go to inquire of the Lord because she did not know what was happening with inside of her. Okay, so she talked to God through the prophet or through any means, maybe could have been prayer. And God said, two people, two nations. So I want you to remember that. There's two people, there's two nations, because these two people, these two nations will run their course until the end of time. All right? These two people, these two nations, will run their course until the end of time. Now, she was having a difficulty in pregnancy. The children struggled in her womb together. Okay. Now, that struggle together in the Hebrew is actually called rawtists, which means they crushed each other. They literally were crushing each other. They were fighting to get the birthright from the family, from the father. So they were fighting to who was going to be the first one to come out of the womb. So that struggle took place. Now, so we see here that the scripture says that two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. Okay. And the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled to give birth, indeed, there were twins in her womb. Twins. And the first came out, watch this, red. First came out red. He was hairy, like a garment. So they called his name Esau. So this is the firstborn that came out the womb. Okay. He was red and he was hairy. All right. So. He came out first, he was red, he was hairy. The Bible gives a description to Esau, but it doesn't give a description on, uh, what's his name, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry. So the Bible talks about he was red and hairy, which means he was different than all the other children in that time, in that era. He was red. He was hairy. One shall be stronger than the other. And the, and, the, and the one shall be stronger than the other simply says that there will be a difference in their bodies. Esau, hairy, red. Okay. Jacob begins, they begin to describe Jacob's identity or his physical. He was a mild man dwelling in tents. Okay. Esau, the Bible says he was a man of the field. He was a, a skillful hunter. Okay. So we have this uh, happening here. The fight comes out. The babies come out. And uh, something critical happens as they're coming out. So the babies, the boys grew. Uh, and Esau was a skillful hunter. A man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man. Okay. And Esau, Isaac, loved Jacob, loved Esau because he ate of his game. Now, at the time that these boys were coming out of the womb, the Bible says that the, uh, Jacob grabbed the, the heel of his brother Esau to, to try to pull him back in the womb so that he could come out. Say, so that he could come out and be the firstborn. Now, that prophecy is actually, well, that incident is actually a prophecy in the second book of Ezra, which is coming from the, the Apocrypha. Now, if you were to read in the Apocrypha, second Exodus 6 and 9, the prophecy is Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So you have Esau coming out first. Jacob following, grabbing the heel of Esau, prophetically speaking, that Esau will rule his kingdom, his dominion, will rule until the end of the world. Then Jacob, okay, he will come after. 
That's important to know. Now, the Apocrypha, which is being uh, distributed today, you can get it anywhere, was written in the original 1611 King James Version. They took it out. They meaning the Roman Catholic Church and those who at that time took this out and hid it so that you could not read it because there's something in these books you need to know. Something in these books you need to know. So they purposely took the Apocrypha out of the original Bible, 1611 King James Version, hid it, and now it's being rediscovered. Now, these books have been hidden for centuries, and they're just coming to light, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. But they're, they're starting to come to light as we speak, okay, as I speak, sort of. Now, so there come a time when Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field because he was a man of the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that red stew. Okay, here we go again. He's, 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 saying it's, he's saying it's red now. Okay. For I am weary. Therefore, watch this. His name is called Edom. Now notice he goes from Esau. And God begins to call him Edom, which means red. So he went from Esau to Edom. So now his name is Edom. Right? Don't get rid of Esau. Let's keep Edom in the forefront now. Because God has something to do and say to Edom and Esau. So he cooks this red stew. Now scholars believe that uh, this red stew was actually had raw meat inside of it. And if you know anything about raw meat, meat it carries the blood inside the meat and this was what he was accustomed or used to eating scholars agree with this the stew that he ate had the life of the flesh in it okay which was forbidden in the old testament for god said do not eat anything with the blood because the life of the flesh the life of the animal is in it's blood. The blood must be poured out on the land and then it can be eaten. So this Esau Edom, okay, was eating raw flesh, raw stew mixed with the blood. Keep, let's keep reading this, okay? So uh, Jacob said, sell me your birthright as this day. Now, this is the response of Esau, who was also Edom, said, look, I'm about to die. What profit shall this birthright be to me? And Jacob said, swear to me of this day. So he swore to him. So he sold him his birthright. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau, he despised his, his birthright. Okay. He despised it. He didn't want it. He said uh, he, a lack of faith. He did not want the inheritance because he was more concentrated on, on his flesh, satisfying his, uh, his natural desire to eat than receiving the inheritance that would be given to him by Isaac, his father. Follow me? Now, something important needs to be noted here. So I'm going to skip over to the book of Malachi, and I'm going to start at chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 1, and this is Malachi the prophet speaking, and this is what he says. He says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. And this is, this is uh, 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 God speaking, okay? We have to understand that God speaks in his word, but there's sometimes the prophet speaking. Sometimes Apostle Paul is speaking. Sometimes people are speaking. This instance, 
the word of the Lord came to this prophet and this prophet wrote it down. And this is what God says. He says to Malachi, I have loved you. He's talking to Israel now. Okay. This is, this is the prophet that specifically sent to the Israelites, the children of Israel. He says, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Israel responds and says, yet we say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Okay, saith the Lord, yet I have loved Jacob. And I hated Esau. Wait a minute now. And this is God. The, 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 the God that you say, he's just a God of love. But yet he says he hate Esau. Now, where did this come from now? How, how, do you, how do you rectify and interpret this scripture? Hate mean hate. You see? Now, nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to preach about this. Nobody wants to teach on this because we've been taught that the God that we're serving is only about love, but the Bible does not say that. The Bible says he's a God that will bring vengeance on his enemies and he will destroy them that hate him. See? He says here, I've loved Esau, I'm excuse me, I love Jacob, I've loved Jacob, but I've hated Esau. Now he's not talking about Esau and what you're talking about. He's talking about a group of people here. He's talking about Edomites, and I'm getting ready to show you that. The descendants of Esau, God says he hates them. Okay? He says he hates them. Now, he says, I've hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage. Who is his heritage? His heritage are his descendants, his seed, his, uh, his offspring. Now, he says, he said, I've hated and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are overpoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. But thus saith the Lord, they shall build, but I will throw them down and they shall call them the board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So he clearly says he hates Esau. He don't like Esau. He loved Jacob. Okay. Now there's a people here. Okay. Whom God hates. And there is a people here whom God loves. Right. So people here. These are the two nations now. These are the two nations that came out of our ancestry mother, Israel. As you know, Jacob, his name, when he fought with the angel, his, his name was turned to Israel. And then you got Esau, his descendants. These two nations. Okay, so we, go, we read a little further, and it says um, that the love-hate relationship that these two, uh, that, that God has, it's not about emotion it's about God's will being performed okay now Esau's people which are the Edomites okay and then you have the lineage that comes from Israel or Jacob which would be the Israelites in whom pertain the promises the glory the covenants that are given to them there's a there's a group of people that God chose he chose. He's, God is, is, is a separatist. He chose a group of people out the earth to bring forth a seed. It's a seed. The seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac, the seed of Jacob, bringing forth the Messiah, which we know today as Christ, a seed. And this is what's happening today. People don't know or undiscerning on the seed or who is who? So, because the, the, the lack of discernment is existing in the church, and people don't understand, they have told us that we are not the seed, we are the Gentiles. And the Jews who are living in the Jerusalem now are the real true Jews, and we're Gentiles, and we're not the seed. But it's just the opposite around. 
It's the opposite around. And, and they know that. They know that if we can keep them blinded by telling them that they are Gentiles, heathen, we are the real Jews, they won't possess the kingdom. They won't inherit the riches of God's glory. They won't uh, uh, understand who they are and regain the kingdom that was once lost. We lost the kingdom. The kingdom was lost because of our rebellion, our disobedience in rejecting the commandments and statutes of the Most High. And it was given to another people. Now, look at this. Isaac, during this time of this course where he begins to bless both of his children before his death. Okay? So let's go, and I'm going to start reading at chapter 27 in Genesis. Now, Rebecca was listening. Okay, let's go to the first chapter number uh, 27, verse 1. It says, Now it came to pass when Isaac was old that his eyes were so dim that he could not see that he called Esau, his older brother, here we go, and said to him, My son, he answered him, Here I am. And he said, Behold, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore prepare, take your weapons and your quiver and your bow and go out to get me savory food. So I'm going to skip on down now. Rebecca was listening. Okay, Rebecca heard what's going on. And then we have the uh, Jacob stealing the blessing. Stealing the blessing that was supposed to be passed down to the older son, Esau. Now, Father, Isaac said to him, come now and kiss me. Here's Jacob coming in. And he came in here to him, kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing and said, okay, this is surely my son because he smells like the field, hunting, hunting animals, killing animals, jumping over rocks. I mean, just out in the field, just, you know, being a skillful hunter that he is, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's son bow to you. So this blessing came to Jacob, known as Israel. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Now, as you read the story, you see his brother came in and saw that the blessing came to his younger brother. Watch this. The Isaac, his father, answered him and gave him a blessing also. So here you have a dispersion of two blessings on two brothers. This is what he says to Esau. Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Watch this. By your sword you shall live, <clears throat> and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass when you become restless that his yoke shall be break, broken off of your neck. Okay, so by your sword shall you live. The sword represents the armies, the military forces that exist today in our nation, and uh, killing, killing by force to take, to take. Okay, the thief cometh not except to steal, kill, and destroy. So this Esau nation, this Jacob nation, excuse me, this Esau nation, this Edom, Edom nation, they specifically take, buy, and kill by the sword. Now, this blessing, the twofold blessing. So what happens here is that this is a prophecy. Now, prophecy has two aspects to it. It has a, a past prophecy, which is a partial prophecy, and then it has a future uh, prophecy, which will be the fulfillment. Okay, so this is, this is actually already taken past, and I can't go into detail tonight, but a partial of that prophecy is already taken past. Now, as you can see here, that Esau has a blessing, and then uh, Israel also has a blessing. Now, let me go to another scripture, and I'll show you. And this is going to be in uh, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 49 and 10. 
Now, there's coming a time, and, and, and we're living in this a critical uh, a time right now, because what is happening is that as a result of uh, the, the plague, I call it, was taking place, God has put all of us in a position to not depend or not put our trust in the things that we were actually serving. We were actually uh, doing things that God was not pleased with, so he had to cut them off at this time. They're being cut off. The things that we are trusted in, such as our jobs, our money, our, our, our finances, church services, people, he's, he's actually cut that off at that, this particular time. Now, some say this will get back to normal and we'll go back to normal. Okay, but what I believe, and this, this is my opinion, this shift that has taken place is a permanent shift. Things are not going to be normal as you thought they were or what we lived before. This, this change that has taken place is a change that is going to uh, push us to a new level of faith. New level of faith. And I wish I could go into detail about that. But right now, the shift that's happening, the things that have taken place, the pandemic. Therefore, our trust must be in God because this is not over. It's not, ladies and gentlemen. There's more to come. This is the, uh, the trial run that's happening by the powers that be, Esau's descendants, by the powers that be to see a reaction on what they can do because it, at, at the end it's about control, it's about money, and it's about power for them. Because they know that Israel are waking up to a truth that has been hidden and suppressed for hundreds of years. And because Israel is awakening out of their spiritual ignorance, they have to reset the entire world. Why? Because Israel is scattered throughout the world. They've been scattered. They, we, we, we have a lost uh, sheep. Christ said, I have came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's talking about a, a group of people right there. There's no way to deny that. There's no way not to see that. Loss means loss of identity, loss of culture, loss of who you are, loss of where you come from. Okay? So the Edomites in the Bible and Esau is this descendant, this, this seed that, has, that is moving and continuing to move until the end of time. And I wish I can go into detail, but I'm not. But it's the so-called white man. That's what it is. If you look at the history, and the only way you can see where you're going is you have to go back because history is like a roadmap to the future. And what they have done, what they have done is not allow you to know your true identity. Because if you think that you are an American, you are blind. If you think this is your country and that this is where you belong, you are blind. You do not. This is not your land. This is not your country. It goes past further than Africa. What took place in the year of 70 A.D. was Romans attacked the city of Jerusalem. They surrounded it for seven years. And then the Romans, Edomites at that time, descendants of Esau, came in and slew and killed a massacre such as has never been since before. They killed babies. They killed women. They killed men to annihilate and seed a, a, a generation of people known as Israelites. So what happened is we fled. We ran for our lives. Because we could not fight but for so long. And we fled into Africa. Okay. We went into Africa to hide from the so-called white Edomites. Because they were going to kill us. We did that because we looked like them. 
We look like them. They look like us. So we figure, let's go into Africa, Egypt, so that we can mingle amongst them and they would not find us. Now, something happened in Africa that took place. We were sold by Africans into the country which you call America today. This is, they don't want you to know that. They take you back as far as Africa and then leave it off. That's what the history books are going to teach you. You're not that, you're, 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 that. This is where you come from. And this is who you are. But clearly you are not African. You're not African. Even Africans know you're not African. They're going to call you by what the, what the scriptures call you Eber. They're going to call you Eber. Because they know who you are, but you don't know who you are. See? They know you are the children of Israel. And if you, don't, if you can do the online research, you don't got to believe me if you don't want to. You can go right on and type in 1492 or type in an old map. You will see a kingdom there called Judah. These are, the, Judah was there. These were Israelites living in the coastal, uh, near the coast part of uh, uh, Ivory Coast and the Gold Coast called Kingdom of Judah. And that's where we live and that's where we were sold. So it goes way past Africa. It goes to Israel when the Romans decided to conquer us and, to, and decided to kill us and persecute us, which is still happening today because there's two nations striving and struggling against each other. You cannot deny that the scriptures Christ even said to his disciples, which were black Jews, by the way, that nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Now, when you take a look at that, it's not simply talking about countries. Yes, there's been wars and there's always going to be wars fighting and countries are always going. But when you look at a nation, you're talking about a nation of people. You're talking about a nationality. You're talking about an ethnic group against an ethnic group. You're talking about a people who will fight against a people that goes back all the way to Rebecca, having these two peoples in her womb that have been fighting ever since. The struggle is still going on. The, 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 the uh, persecution is still going on and will get greater. This is the two peoples that are going to run throughout the face of the earth until the end, lose the kingdom, which will be Esau, the kingdom will be passed down to us and we will reign here on earth as what the scripture calls kings and priests, as we once were. History, history says it. We were once kings and priests in time the whole world. We were here first. Okay? We were. Scientists, scholars agree, but they're not going to tell you that. They're not going to show you that because they don't want you to know because if they find out and you find out who you really are, your God will fight for you and your God will start to bring these kingdoms and these nations down and give you back what you lost by our forefathers. By our fathers who rejected and walked away and did not obey laws. Now you have a lawless society. Because now they have told you, Christians, exclude, say that we don't need the law anymore because we're under grace. Well, if you don't need no law anymore, what, what, is the, what is the deciding factor that is going to tell you what is right and what is wrong? Well, you say we have the word. Well, the word is the law. The word is the law. He says the, the word of the Lord is, is the law of the Lord is, is, is converts the soul. But we don't need laws these days. We can just live by grace and do anything we want. And God, watch this, God will forgive us. So you see the church condition today. Everybody lives the way they want to live and they decide on what is right and what is wrong. Because there's no law now. Well, this is because our fathers rejected it. We're still rejecting it. We have no knowledge of self. We have no identity because we've been scattered across the face of this earth to four different corners. North, south, east, west, Israel's been scattered. 
They don't know who they are. They don't even know their culture. When the Bible simply is a book of culture, ladies and gentlemen. It is a book of, to, about black people for black people. But unless you are awoke to see it, you will, you will read right over this. You'll, you'll read right over this. And you'll think in your own mind what you think it is and what you think it says. No, no, no. It's for you. It's about you. It's a lost people here. We've identified it in the scriptures that there's a lost tribe that have been found. Other tribes know who they are. We don't know who we are. If we knew who we are, we wouldn't behave the way we do. If we knew our, our true identity, that you are the seed of Abraham, you are the children of Israel, we wouldn't kill each other. We wouldn't destroy each other's lives because we know that we are the children of the Most High God. But for, 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 the, for the church's sake and what Christianity has said, because Christianity, if you, re, if you do the study, and I did, I did, I wanted to find out what is truth and what is lies. I put the time in, I put the study in, I put the work in, I put the hours to find out what is true. Christianity did not come from Christ. He did not set up Christianity. Okay? He didn't, he, he, the disciples were not called Christians. Okay? Christ was not a Christian. All right? That didn't start to after Christ died. And they named them Christians by the Romans in, in Antioch because it's not in the Bible, but one or two times. So why are you calling yourself Christian? I understand. You call yourself Christian because that's what you've been taught. That's what you've been know. But God calls you Israel. He calls you the children of, of Jacob. That's who you are. He calls you Israel. Ain't no Christians in heaven. You won't even see the word Christian in heaven because it's not a, it's not a, it's not a word that God created. He said, you are Israel. He calls another group Edom. He calls another group Moab. He calls another group of people Ammon. But why, why is nobody talking about this? Nobody wants to, to understand these prophetic events that are happening are written right in the word of God. They're clearly right there. What group of people has been persecuted, killed, destroyed, raped, abused them blacks. We have. We have. We are the ones who have suffered slavery for hundreds of years and still are in slavery and been denied and at, we're now at the, the, the tail when we should be the head. You see, we're at the foot because of our rejection our rejection from what God has commanded us to do in his word. And that's the condition that we're in. And if we don't change and get back to it, things will continue to progress. Judgments will continue to be poured out because God has to judge a people who has destroyed his people. Who has come against his people. He says it right here. But Esau, here we go. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. Here's a destruction. His descendants are plundered, his brethren and his neighbors, and he is no more. Now, this prophecy took place uh, years ago, hundreds of years ago, but I'm not going into that. I'm not going to talk about that. It's a partial prophecy, but he is coming to it's, it's, it's coming to that place. Now, this is what he says. For indeed I will make you, he's talking, here's the Lord talking to Esau. He says, behold, I will make you small among the nations, despised among men. Your fierceness has deceived you. The pride of your heart, O oh, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock. So he's got a place where he's living, which would be rocks, which would be mountains. The pride of your heart you dwell in, you who hold the height of the hill. Now listen what he says. He says, though you make your nest as high as the eagle. What is it? What is the what is the emblem of America? And Britain, by the way. It's the eagle. God's talking to them. He's talking to Esau right now. Though you make your nest as high as the eagle, he says, I will bring you down from there, says the Lord. 
There it is. The eagle. The symbol of Esau, Edom, also known as America. Now, when they landed on the moon, they first landed on the moon. You know the story. He put the, they put the flag there, and what did they say? They said, the eagle has landed. See? They're building their nests in the stars. They're already starting it right now. They're, start, they're trying to get out there and build colonies. They're trying to build uh, uh, places where they can uh, live because they know destruction from the Almighty is coming. They know the scriptures. These are what the Bible calls the so-called Jews that are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan, the 13 bloodline families that control this earth. They run the earth. These are the ones who are impostering the real Jews, which is us. So they're building. God says, listen, you can build your nest amongst the stars, but the day will come. He will bring that nest down. Mountains laid flat. Desolations, houses laid flat from the judgment of the Almighty. Edom also shall be an astonishment, and everyone who goes by it will be astonished and will hiss at all his plagues. Listen, as in the overflow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, like the neighboring cities, says the Lord, no one shall be abide by there, nor shall any man dwell there. So that prophecy has not yet been fulfilled, but it shall be fulfilled. So, again, we got two nations, we got two people striving against one another, struggling for, against one another to the end of time until God gives the kingdom back to the Israelites who lost the kingdom because of our disobedience in our rejection of God Most High. So let's go back to where we started. The two nations shall be in your womb. Two people shall come from your body. Older shall serve the younger. So we have Esau and we have Edom here. Now, Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are in at hand. Then I will kill Jacob. He said, I will kill him because he stole the blessing. Now watch this. If I were to go back, and we're going to go there, I'm going to go to Genesis of how all of this came to pass in the Garden of Eden. The serpent and Eve and how God spoke to the serpent concerning a seed. Remember I said to remember the seed. All right, so we all know the story. Eve ate from the forbidden fruit, and and they, they, their eyes were opened, and they saw that they were naked. And the Lord said, "Where, where art thou, Adam?" Here's the story. Now, this is what this is what God says. Okay, He first he talks to the serpent. He says, "Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. And all your belly you shall go. Okay, and you shall eat the dust all the days of your life." And then He says, "I will put enmity." Deep hatred, struggle, strife between, here it is, between you and the woman. I'm going to put a struggling conflict between the serpent, also known as Satan, and the woman. Here it is. And between your seed, here it is, and her seed. Your seed, the serpent seed. And the woman see, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God clearly says that there's a seed. There's a, a DNA code. A DNA code that they are looking for. This is why they're doing the tests. This is why they're doing the, the samples. They're gathering DNA to find out who has the code. I will put 
enmity between your seed and her seed. Who is the seeds? Here we go again. We got another seed. We got a seed coming from the serpent. And we got a seed coming from God. Now Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother, Abel. We go on and read. We know the story. Abel also brought the firstlings of the flock to the, of, of the fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offerings, but he did not respect Cain. And his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. God spoke to, speaks to Cain, says, why are your countenance fall? He said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? If you don't do well, he says, sin lies at the door. Sin crouches at the door. It lays in wait for you to open up the door so that it can come in. So it, it crouches at the door. Now, he goes on and says, and the Lord said to Cain, well, Cain talked with his brother Abel. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. There you go. There's, there's a seed there. Christ spoke to the disciples and said that you were a murderer from the beginning and do not stand in the truth. He was speaking to the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees at that time who were so-called Jews. They were not real Jews, religious, and said that you are of your father, the devil, for he was a murderer, Cain, from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Here's, a, here's another example of the serpent seed. Now. The scriptures, and I don't, I'm not going there because my time is up. I can show you in the word of God where Eve was seduced by the serpent prior to her coming and marrying Adam. Something took place in that garden between her and Lucifer, the shining one. Now, if, you, if you, you know your Bible, you know that Lucifer is the shining one, the son of the morning. His clothes, every precious stone. Something took place in that moment that she ate from the fruit, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and produced which she thought a man from the Lord, but it was actually the seed of Satan. He was the murderer. He was the murderer in the garden and he acted out his murderous intentions to a man named Cain. If you keep reading, you'll see where Cain was cast out of the garden and he went and dwelt amongst uh the people of that time, Cain's course continued to go down. His course of life continued to. So there's a seed running here, ladies and gentlemen. There's a seed. There's a, there's a people who God has blessed and there's a people whom God has cursed. They've switched it around to think that you're the cursed ones because they told us that we come from Ham. Because Ham was a black man. Well, studies don't prove that. Studies don't show that. Studies show that Ham is the, is the progenitor of the Africans because he had sons named Cush and Mitzriam. But no, we don't come from Ham. And they know we don't come from Ham. We come from Shem because the Bible says that God found, uh, Noah found grace in God's eyes and, re and saved a group of people, which would be his sons, and his son's uh, wives to produce and to keep a seed going on throughout the remainder of the earth. We do not 
come from Ham like they told us to. Ham is of the African progenitor. He's the father of all Africans. We are Shemites. We come from Shem. Shem carries the godly seed. He, 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 it's a seed that came, had to come all the way until it got to Christ. And that seed is still here in the earth. And they are looking for it. And they know it. They know who you are. But you don't know who you are. And we, and we casually uh, talk about how we're, we're, we're children of God. And rightly we are. However, there's a natural side that goes along with this. It's not just a spiritual side. There's a natural side group of people whom God chose who are in the earth today they're going to tell you there's no such thing them people have died the real Jews are in Israel but them real Jews in Israel are not real Jews and people know they're not real Jews that's why they're fighting that's why they're fighting today because they know these are not the real people who belong in there but this is what the Bible says the Gentiles shall tread the land tread the land the holy land until their time is up until the time is finished these are Gentiles Khazars they come from the Caucasus Mountains and they trotted themselves into Jerusalem to impose and imposter themselves to be the so-called Jews. Christ said they are Jews of the synagogue of Satan. They are not the real Jews. The black people here in America are the real Jews. We are the Israelites. And they don't want you to believe it. And they don't want you to know it. And they'll continue to spread their lies. They'll continue to do it. As long as to keep you deceived and to keep you undiscerning on who because, see, once you find out who they are not, you will begin to find out who you are. See, they don't want, they don't want to expose that. So they had to reset the whole thing, change the whole thing, distract everybody so that they will not find out their true identity to realize that this book is not written by a white man. It was written by a black man, King James, who sat on three thrones and he wasn't a homosexual as they say he was. He was a black man and he comprised and he got people together to write this book so that you can read and understand that this is your culture. These are your people and this ain't your country. This don't belong to you. You're in it. This ain't your land. This ain't your heritage. You lost your culture. You lost your heritage. When we fled from Israel, in 70 AD into Africa, we lost it. And like I told you, you're not African. They call you African. They call it to, to, to deter you, to distract you so that you can't find out who you really are. So they're going to call you these names, African American, Black American, Negro, put all these names on you. And what they do is they keep modifying it and changing it every few years to give you a new name to, so that you won't know that you Israel. You don't know that you are the children of Israel that the Bible's talked about who walked in the wilderness for 40 years that Abraham was a black man, Isaac was a black man, Jacob was a black man, Moses was a black man. All of them were black people. But they're not going to point that out to you. Because see, they say color don't matter. If color don't matter, then why when I say Jesus is a black man, there's a big hoopla. Everybody's every, everybody wants to to to, uh, to you know say I'm racist or say we're racist because Jesus is black. When he was a white Jesus, nobody had a problem with it. Nobody said nothing. But once he starts saying he's a black Jesus, like John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, his feet was burnished bronze and he had hair like wool. It's a problem now because as long as they keep the image of a white Christ. They, you become subservient to them. You are still in slavery. You will be held in the bondage of your mind. And you will not come to the real knowledge of the truth. So it does matter. It does matter. He that does not confess that Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. They won't tell you that. They're going to tell you everything and, uh, and anything, and, but, but deny who Christ really is. They'll say he's a Middle Eastern man. They'll say he's, he's, a, he's a brown man. 
but they won't confess and say, he, how come you can't say he's a black man? He's a black Jesus. Why don't you say something about that? Why don't you talk about that? Because color don't matter. Well, color does matter. Because according to this book, the real children, the real Jews were black Jews. And if he came from Judah, which we came from, he had to have skin like us. And for, you, and for them to even lie about something so special and something so precious ought to make you angry. They say you're Jesus. The one who died for you don't look like you. It looked like them. Well, where's my savior at? Where's the one who died for me? Because I want somebody that, he, that looks like me, that can identify with my, past, my, my pain, my struggle, that can understand my infirmities. And only a black Jesus, a black God can understand that. Not a white God. He don't know what it means to be pulled over by the police. They don't understand the fear that comes. But a black Jesus would. A black God would understand that. I digress. Thank you. Joining tonight. Please join me again next Sunday as we'll continue Israel and Edom. The two nations that came out of our mother, Rebecca. And the two nations are continually struggling today and will continue to struggle until the second coming of our Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.